Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Media Hub Spotlight, where we focus on enhancing all of your digital, digital skills. And today we're spotlighting an area that is familiar to a lot of us, and that's social media and how to shape your videos for social media using Adobe Premiere. And I'm really excited because it's just a couple of clicks away to make your videos shape for, say, TikTok. So we're going to rock and roll here, and I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to start off with um, what I got going on in my editing program, Premiere. All right. So in Premiere, um, let me make sure that all my screens are good and rock and roll in here. Um, in Premiere, um, I got a couple footages here, um, some clips in here. And I'm going to show you how we ended up walking through. You may have seen it if you follow us on Instagram at VU underscore C-O-M-M. Uh, this video we posted both in the story and in a post, and I'm going to play it for you guys here, and it's not too long. But just a little plug-in for Adobe, if you're a Vanguard student, be sure to download and well, register, then download your Adobe Creative Cloud Suite um, using your Vanguard credentials, and then you'll be able to access this software uh, for yourself at home. All right, so let's take a look at this little video. Watch my the top of my uh, right part of the screen here and I want you to see what you ended up seeing on Instagram. Well that's super neat. And then we had a second video and it was the vertical version and Xander would laugh not talking about myself uh, but Xander producing in the background would laugh because he almost said like this was a video highlighting myself I'm not pretentious guys this is not highlighting me but check it out So that's the finished product and we're going to get there and I want to start by showing you what I sort of did early on and and really briefly and I know this is not a premiere workshop but I want to show you just a few things in premiere that I did early on that is vital in in creating the posts or finished products that you've seen just moments ago. So I imported all of my clips that I shot on our black magic camera our 6K black magic camera. And I'm sorry, uh, where are my clips here? Use these clips, here we go. And all of these, all of the clips we shot were in 50 frames per second. That's how we were able to get the slow motion walk sort of uh, movement going on. And I, um, what I did was I just interpreted all of the 50 frames per second footage and I interpret it down to 23, the original here, 23.97. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. I imported all of these clips here. I'm gonna highlight all of them by holding shift. And then I'm gonna right click on them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to modify the, the and go to interpret footage. And I wanna do all of that for all the clips I highlight. I'm gonna go up here where it says interpret footage assume this frame make sure i'm in that and i'm going to type in 23.97 from there all i'm going to do is click ok and you'll see all of my footage drop down to 23.97 frames so what is that doing it's taking a higher frame rate 50 frames per second and dropping it down to 23 where i want it so you're going to take all those frames you shot at a higher level and slowing them down or spreading them out to 23.97 frames you'll see it, it'll change and it just changed all right there. So that's how we got the slow motion. There's a little bit of coordination here. So knowing that you wanna shoot something in slow motion, you're gonna to wanna to shoot it at a higher frame rate. And just a rule of thumb, when you're shooting it at say 50, 60, 120 frames per second, you gotta make sure that your shutter speeds double what you know you're gonna be editing in. And so in this case, we're editing in 23.97, times that by two, I'm not going to do it. Let me pull my handy cal uh, calculator here. 23.97 times 2 is about 47. So we had our shutter speed at 50. Yeah? All right. It's a lot of math there. I, some of you guys are looking at me like, oh, my gosh, that's a lot of math. But it's all going to make sense when you actually get to practice it 
Again, that's not a premiere workshop. I want to I want to get to uh, the the end result here, but I'm going to show you a few things, and that's one of those things we did in able to achieve that slow motion. So the slow motion um, was a coordinated thing early on. One of the things that we did not coordinate well, and you'll see here in the um, in the vertical version of it, was that we should have stood closer together. So when you're thinking about uh, filming things vertically or, or shaping things for show, social media, know that if your end result's gonna be vertical, you gotta coordinate, um, say your cast or subject or, or talent in a way where you know it's gonna fit within that frame. And um, so that's something that we learned. We're like, oh my gosh, we should have stood closer together. So we learned that, right? So keep that in mind. There is a bit of coordination that happens um, when thinking about shaping your videos for social media, right? And so, yeah, this was a promotion. This was something to push. That was, we we're pushing today's spotlight. And so um, we thought we wanted to do something enticing, something kind of cool. And I know that Danda would agree if we could, Add the special effects of like an explosion in the background. We could have, but we it was just it was taking too long, uh, so we just uh, created this short little clip here. Uh, so I want to show you a few things that I did. Um, I'm going to drop the clips that we just changed to 23.97. I'm going to drop them in, and then what I did first, if you see up here in the middle of my of your screen or my screen, there is an, a shot of the the empty sort of walkway. We shot the empty walkway first because what I wanted to do and, and was I wanted us to almost like appear in the frame. So what I, I'm going to drop this into, uh, I'm just going to keep existing settings. Okay. Okay. I'll decrease this here so you can see that. And it's really neat because when you're, especially when you're trying to go for a rough cut and you're thinking about how to sort of cut on, on the go, use the letters Q and W. Q will trim the front end and W will trim the back end. And you'll see what I mean here when I, when I play it. So all I know is on the, say I didn't want the front end of that, I'm just gonna push Q and it cuts it off. And then say I didn't want the back end, all I gotta do is push W and it cuts it off at the end. So it's a really quick way um, to edit, especially when you're going for a rough cut. I don't want this audio, so I'm gonna hold Option, click, and then delete it. That's how I'm able to select the audio separate from the clip itself, okay? Now, this is gonna be foundation. One of the cool things that I wanna show you is, um, let's see if this is the clip I want. So this is the clip I want, guys, it's so funny. These are all bloopers. <laughs> so I'm going to drop this right on top of this foundational clip. I'm going to erase the audio by holding option, clicking separate from the clip and deleting that. In the same way, I'm going to move that away, in the same way that I'm trimming the front and the back end. So look, I don't want any of this. You see how it's already slow motion, right? If I had dropped the 50 frames version of the clip into the timeline, it would have been at normal pace, normal speed. But because I interpreted the footage from 50 down to 23.97, it slows everything down, right? It's a lot better way of doing slow motion versus uh, creating the speed of the clip to be slower, right? get more of a natural look. Right? All right, so I'm gonna clip the front end. I wanna start right when we start walking. I wanna, that's where I want the clip to start. So I'm gonna push the letter Q. Make, um, make sure the clip is selected. Letter Q, come on, come on, come on, what happened? There it is. I had to put it in the active timeline, duh. All right, and then I am going to have the footage end right where I get to the front, because that's where I'm gonna fade off and I'm gonna push the letter W. And then to move your, your clips up and down or, or from timeline, video timeline to video timeline, all you gotta do is Select the clip, hold option, and push the up or down arrows, right? So I'm gonna move this clip of us walking to the very top, and I'm gonna move the empty clip of just the space below that. So I'm gonna layer them on top of each other. I'm gonna clean up a little bit, have everything fit with each other, all right? 
So right now you're seeing what is on top, right? Hierarchically speaking, if you work with Photoshop, it's almost like working with layers. You're gonna see the, 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 the top layer above everything else is gonna affect everything below it. And so because it, it works that way, what I wanna do is I'm gonna add an, I'm gonna add a transition. So a shortcut to add a transition really quickly when you're shaping your videos for social media, it helps to know like quick shortcuts. These are quick videos, they're not long, right? There's in fact, there's like 13 seconds, but a shortcut for a transition is select the clip you want and push command D and you'll see the transitions on both the front and the back end disappear. And you'll see that the three individuals or talent will appear. Whoa, what happened? Well, they appear if I do, if I delete the bottom layer, they don't just appear, the whole clip appears. But because the bottom layer is there and it's, it matches the static nature of, of the shot, it makes it look like we appear. So there's a little bit of coordination there, yeah? We coordinated this idea and we planned out that we wanted to, to the individuals to make it seem like they appear in, in, the, in the shot, like almost like they have this power to disappear or reappear. So we shot the, the, um, the walkway first, and then we shot the walkway with individuals on it with our actors, and then we put them together on top of each other, and it looks like they appear. <gasps> Whoa, super neat, yeah. And so real quickly, what I wanna do next is, all I did was I created a new adjustment, right? Cause I was like, ah, oh, I gotta change the, 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 the color. I want it to pop a little bit. I want it to fit sort of my aesthetic and my feel. And I usually like sort of darker tones, contrasty, a little colder. So I'm gonna create an adjustment layer. So in my project panel here, I'm gonna go to the bottom right hand corner, it says new item, I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna select adjustment layer. Uh, and I wanna make sure that the time base is the same frames per second and that's 23.978. All that stays the same, 1920 by 1080, right? And then I'm gonna take this adjustment layer as it appears in my project panel. I'm just gonna drag it to the next video, video, um, timeline layer and put it above everything else. I'm gonna double click it. And for Premiere, there are these different sort of workspaces that you have at the very top. I'm just gonna click color and then double click adjustment layer again. And I just, I'm OCD in that way. And I just make sure that, I always have to make sure that I'm always clicking that I'm always saving. So I'm saving my project. And I know that I am in the proper adjustment layer because in my source panel here, it says adjustment layer. It says adjustment layer here. Right. And I'm gonna go ahead and color correct it. Um, I'm gonna work on the exposure. Actually, I'm not gonna work on the exposure first. I'm gonna work on the white balance. So I'm gonna click white balance. And then I'm gonna try and find something white in the, in the frame. So let's go. Oh, look, if I click on anything else, you'll see. Whoa, that looks weird. Looks weird. Right? So I'm a, I want angel shoe here. I click that white balance. Whoa, that looks nuts. Let's do this guy again. White balance is the blue. Just for fun. Again, just for the sake of the workshop, I just want to show you some of the things that we did when, when you're creating your videos. I'm going to work on some of the exposure. Now remember, all this is in the adjustment, adjustment, um, sequence that uh, or item that we put in this video timeline three. Okay, I'll work on that. Up the contrast. So I want the if I want that the sky to pop, maybe I'll raise the highlights a little, drop some of the shadows. I love working with blacks and I especially when things are a little darker and colder. So I'm gonna drop my black or raise my black. Now I'm gonna drop it. Let's raise the whites here just a little. And then you'll see the difference here when I toggle off the eyeball in video timeline three. It pops. Okay. So I'm um, gonna add sort of a vignette just for fun to bring the focus in on the on the cast members or the actors here. So I'm gonna drop 
Oh, my camera will turn back on. Don't worry about it. So you drop the unit a little bit. Drop the midpoint. Maybe, yeah, I'm focusing on the roundness and then feather it out a little bit. Let's drop that a little more to bring focus in. We're always thinking about where are, are we want our viewers' eyes to go when we're thinking about shaping videos for social media because we don't have too much time. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we focus our viewers. We tell the viewer's eyes where we want them to go, where we want them, what we want them to see. What I'm trying to say. Now look, there we go. With no music, we've shaped some, just a little bit of what we got going on. And then you can add your own kind of text. You can add your own kind of music um, um, and, and make it work for, for what kind of video you're trying to shape. So I'm gonna go back to the, my version that we started with. It's gonna get a little loud, so here we go. And you'll see, well, let's meet that bad boy. You'll see that I've added text and, and the, the text has its own effect to it. And I've added sort of the time and the fades, all sort of stuff that we I just kind of showed you just moments ago. Um, including that stuff that I showed you moments ago is what I'm trying to say. But now I'm thinking, man, this full on video is I need it to be vertical. Now we can you can do that a number of ways. You can go to sequence, you can change the sequence size, you can change it and match it to um, you can go to sequence, you can change the sequence settings and you can change the frame size, horizontal and vertical. But I need I but I want this 16 by 9 to be 9 by 16. And there's a quicker way than having to go and recreate a new sequence. In fact, you're gonna recreate a new sequence, but the software is gonna do it for us. I'll show you. So I'm gonna go back to my project panel all the way down here. And what I want to do is I want to select one of my sequences. The sequence that I want to change to nine by 16. So the sequence that I want to change and I want to make that sequence vertical. And so that sequence is this walk up intro underscore zero one. Okay. So that's this one right here. So I'm going to select that sequence. And with that sequence selected, I'm going to go up to sequence in my Premiere Pro application bar at the very top. And then I am going to go down to auto reframe sequence. I'm going to click that. This window will appear. It's going to ask you what you want to rename your new sequence. And I'm going to rename it IG because I know it's going to IG vertical walk up intro zero one. I do that for a couple of reasons with this naming convention. I know that it's going to be for Instagram. I know that's going to be vertical. And I know that the version that I am borrowing from is walk up intro zero one. I'm going to erase the rest of it. Because if I need to go back to the original 16 by 9, I know that it's from walk up intro underscore zero one. So there's a lot of organization that happens in editing. Yeah. So so there's a, it's a little bit of madness too. <laughs> right. So I'm going to see where it says target aspect ratio. I don't want it to be square, although you can do a square version because Instagram is a square one by one. They you do utilize that in your post, but I want it to be vertical and I want to post this in my story. So I'm going to go vertical and nine by 16 and motion tracking is not going to be fast in motion. It's not going to be default, which is what you have on your timeline, but I know for a fact that it's going to be slower motion. So I'm going to select slower motion and I don't want it to nest the clip. So I'll make sure that don't nest clip is created and I'm going to click create. And you'll see that the IG vertical walk up intro automatic new sequence automatically appears in my timeline. And if I want to, find it in my projects panel, all I got to do is click these three bars in that panel and then show it. Oh my, show, oh my God, why am I blinking? Should just show me in the panel on this reveal sequence of project. And you'll see it in my project panel. It's, it's over here, IG underscore vertical underscore walk up intro. So here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to go back to this newly created <clears throat> vertical version of the video I uh, of the video, excuse me, now I'm going to play it. Oh. Oh. 
Oh no, what happened? It didn't really, did it work? Did it not work? It worked, but we have to do some adjustments. So I know that, that my footage here um, of us walking needs to be adjusted. So I'm gonna double click the footage and you'll see here, when you double click your footage, you get sort of these controls here in your effect control panel. And you'll see that the motion itself is, is disabled. You just wanna enable or turn it back on. And then you're there able to affect its motion, its size, the position of the of the clip, the rotation of the clip, and everything that, that everything else that comes with the enabled effect of motion uh, in your video. And in this case, when I enabled it, it automatically reframed everything for me. Okay. And I'll just do the same for the the um the uh the the video clip of uh, of nothing there i'll just enable that but we're still not done my text my text is off and they seem separate so in the same way what you're going to do is just double click your text and then what and for me what's easier is just to go to graphics and i'm going to double click my text and then i'm going to go to edit and then make sure that I'm able to select particular um, portions of my text. And then I'm able to move it or resize it. So let's resize that to one time. And let's see, let's just do Media Hub first. So I'm gonna click Media Hub. And right here, my essentials graphics window, I, I am able to see the type of which text I want to choose. And I can affect that text and change that, especially with its size. So I'm gonna scroll. Through. Oh, I don't wanna change. Oh no, there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna change the size there. And make sure you're not going past these, these uh, safe areas here uh, in your vertical video here, all right? Premiere is giving you these safe lines safety lines here so if your text goes beyond those lines you risk the um you risk having that text cut off in your video when you actually post it so i'm just going to zoom in here so i can see the text a little better all right all right scroll up go to the scroll down so i can fix that move that and then go back up to spotlight go back down Okay, and I want, so I'm gonna hold shift, click, click on the other portions of the text so I can move them all down together. Okay, I'm gonna go back, click on spotlight because I wanna move the spotlight word. And then if I go fit, it's all there. And I would do the same for this as well for the uh, last information at the end of the, the video. So let's zoom in. Scroll down. All right, let's go back up, click that. Scroll down, here we go. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have a fully vertical video for social media for TikTok, for instagram stories and again you can go back and have this and have the software automatically reframe everything for one by one square post um with just a click or a few clicks of the button but we're not done yet we got to take it out of the software and into a capable video that's not in Premiere and then post it to social media. So what you'll do is you go to file export, make sure that you are in the sequence that you want to export. So for instance, this vertical, this vertical version is what I want to export. Everything is clear, nothing's on the tail end, all my effects are good, nothing's muted, 
I'm gonna go to file my applications bar from your pro. I'm gonna scroll down to export, export media. And you'll see this window pop up. Now I'm gonna keep the format at H.264. Now, for whatever reason, again, this is not a premier workshop, but really all this just led up to just those few clicks of the button that I want to show before a brief intro on what to export. You can keep it at the match source high bit, high bit rate. H.264 is a general good go to, especially when you're exporting for YouTube or for Facebook. All right. And then you click here where it says output name. You see it's, it's highlighted. You click there. If you click that, you're able to rename your footage and you're able to tell the, the software where you want to save your export. For me, I always keep an export folder in the, in the folder that I'm working, in the folder of the project that I'm working on. Let me say that one more time. I always keep an export folder inside of the folder of the project that I'm working on. I have an export and then I'm an IG export. And then for me, I just rename it X for export. And then it's gonna be export two because I already have an export already created. So that's X one. So that I want this to be X two, the newer version. And it's gonna keep everything else. IG vertical walkup intro underscore zero one. That's also the name of your sequence. And I'm just gonna click save. And then I'm gonna export my media. And it's going to happen real quickly. It's not a long video. There's not a whole lot of effects on it. Um, it's going to happen real quick. And if you're on a Mac, what's really, really cool is I'm able to then, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm able then to go to my video. I found it. And then I'm able to airdrop it to myself. And it's going to find my phone. You're going to laugh at the Shazam. There it is. And I'm gonna airdrop it and it's gonna appear in my phone. There it is, I see it. It's asking me if I wanna accept it. And I'm gonna accept it. And then it's on my phone. And just like that, it's on my phone and I can post away like I normally would when I post for social media. And that is shaping your videos for social media using Premiere. All right. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. All right. How, are there any ways, Kenzie, uh, uh, Xander, do you guys find this useful? Go ahead, Xander, do you have a question? Yeah, can I turn my camera on? Absolutely. Cool. I don't have to live in the dark anymore. So I actually, I did have a question. Um, I know that you you said when we were adding the adjustment uh, layer that we have to change the FPS. Uh, what would happen if we if it wasn't moving at the same uh, FPS as the video? You you risk drop frames. Okay. You want it's consistently you want to make sure that everything is in the same frame, right? Um, per second. Right, and then I had, I had the question about why it was 23.9 instead of um, 24. 24, but yeah, when you, you answer that, so we're all good. Um, well, that I, I, that is actually a good point. Why 23.98, why, tw why not 24? Um, it all just depends on what, well, first off, I wanted a cinematic look and 23.98 and 24 frames per second is the standard for a cinematic look. And okay. so I knew that I wanted it to look that way. Um, but I also knew that I wanted to film in slow motion. So there was going back to that little bit of coordination, thinking through and planning out the, the type of, of video or, or, or show or, or clip or, or post that we want to do. Um, I had that whole plan the entire time. So take it slow motion, drop it down to 23.98. Um, and, um, then you get slow motion to interpret the footage. Okay, and I know that you're saying 23.98, but you put 23.97 in the video. Yeah, so per, you're you're right. So Premiere, <laughs> Premiere didn't recognize 23.98, so it recognized 23.97. So in fact, when I was first working on this video, I had I entered 23.98, and it downgraded it a digit less. 
to 97. So it did it itself. So when I put 0.98, it just turned it into 0 0.97. 0 0.976 is that that's what it turned it into. So so all right, so when you're thinking about shaping your videos for social media and you start to think about um, what type of editing software you want to use and what's going to be beneficial for you, I do want to let you know that if you don't have the time to open up Adobe Premiere Pro, you do have the capability, at least I think you do, to download Adobe Premiere Rush. And that acts as a, a, an editing software on your phone and it, and it's just and it matches if not better than say video leap um uh uh, uh iMovie um and it syncs with all of your adobe work so if you have anything going on that you wanted to check with your libraries and 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 just it, it syncs with everything adobe creative cloud so adobe premiere rush is something that you i think you can download as vanguard students and, and be able to have that on your phone I think, let me know if you can or cannot, all right? All right, guys, well, thanks for showing up. Did you have any, another question, Tanner? Kenzie, did you have a question? I was just gonna say that um, I have used Adobe Premiere Rush with my account and it does work. <laughs> score, <laughs> score. Okay, well, I hope that that using Adobe Premiere Rush and using Adobe Premiere in shaping your, your videos for social media, that um, I know for me, Adobe has made that, that project, that, that, that ability a lot of more efficient and quite frankly, easier when posting videos and creating videos. Thanks for showing up to you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for showing up to the spotlight. I don't know why I just did this, but that's almost like, me talking. <laughs> Anyhow, all right. Bye, Kenzie. Bye, guys.